Okay, boys and girls, we're going to talk about everyday forces. In particular, we're going to be talking about friction, which is something that we have talked about before and which we're going to kind of either, we're going to add a little bit to our knowledge. Some of this you already are kind of familiar with. So friction. On a slick, wet surface of a water slide, you glide along easily. Who here has been on a water slide? Oh, pretty much everybody's been on a water slide. If you sit down like that on a dry, hilly sidewalk, you wouldn't move at all. So if you were on a, on a hilly, if you went on like a dry hill, would you slide down like you went on a water slide? You definitely would not. Friction against the sidewalk would stop you from sliding. So if you tried that on a sidewalk, you would not move like you would on a water slide. You just wouldn't because the friction would be totally different than it is on a water slide. There would be a lot more friction on a sidewalk than there is on a water slide. Friction is a force that opposes motion between objects that are touching. Rub your hands together quickly. Everybody rub your hands together quickly. Okay? What's happening to them? What do you feel? Logan? They get warm, that's right, they get warm. They soon feel warm because of friction between them. That's what's causing them to get warm. It's the friction between your hands. So you can stop now. So when it's cold outside, you'll often, you'll often see people rubbing their hands together because the friction of your hands will cause your hands to get warm. Yes? Well, sometimes I don't really do that. I just blow on my hands. Oh, you blow on them. Yes, the warm air will do the same thing. Okay, so now we have a video that we're going to watch that's going to show you more about friction. I have some very cool videos. Bob sleds race one at a time down an ice covered track. Racers compare times to see who makes the fastest trip to the finish line. The track is like a curvy tube that is open on top. Bob sleds do not have wheels or motors. Riders give the sled a running push and then jump in. The Bob sled hit. Wait, I don't want to do the Bob sled yet. Friction on a zip line is low. And a zip line provides an exciting ride. The faster the rider goes, the more thrilling the ride. The pulley that carries the zipline rider reduces friction, so the rider moves quickly down the cable. But at the end of the ride, friction becomes very important. The pulley that carries the rider has a brake. The brake gradually applies friction against the cable. The friction slows the motion of the rider all the way to a safe stop. So who here has ever been on a zipline? So quite a few people. I've been on one myself. So as you start out on the fric on the zip line, you have low friction. You have low friction because you want to go what? Hector? Slow. You want to go slow at the beginning? Go fast. You want to go fast, so you have low friction. Towards the end, you have high friction because you want to start to slow down, right? You want to start to slow down. Friction is low when a bobsled. Bobsleds race one at a time down an ice covered track. Racers compare times to see who makes the fastest trip to the finish line. The track is like a curvy tube that is open on top. Bobsleds do not have wheels or motors. Riders give the sled a running push and then jump in. The bobsled gets all its speed from sliding downhill on a slick surface. The only parts of the sled that touch the icy track are narrow blades. There is very little friction between the blades and the ice, so the sled can move quickly. Okay. So now a bobsled, number one, it doesn't have a motor. 
But those bob sleds go really, really fast. And there's the people in them, they kind of, they steer them. I think they have like these, these like pulley things in them. And then they steer them by moving their bodies, help steer them along the track as well. And they are going very, very fast in those bob sleds. It can be dangerous to be in a bobsled, but it looks like a lot of fun. Who thinks it looks like fun to be in a bobsled? Who thinks it looks dangerous to be in a bobsled? It can be dangerous to be in the bobsled as well. You have an accident in that bobsled, but it still looks like a lot of fun. It, they go pretty fast in those bobsleds. So do you think there's a lot of friction on the ice? What do you think? Is there a lot of friction on that ice? Yeah? No. No, there isn't. You want to have the least amount of friction you can possibly have. And why would you want to have low friction on the bobsled? Santiago? Because you want to go fast. You're trying to go as fast as you humanly can in that bobsled because the bobsledders are racing. Now they're not racing another bobsled on that track, but they are racing time. So they're keeping track of all the time. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. So let's do this. It says, below is a chart of items that are used for moving around. They are sorted by whether they have low or high friction against the surfaces on which they are used. Add three items of your own to the table. Also list the surfaces on which they are used and the friction they produce. So you're going to be thinking about the item, the surface that they are using, and whether they have low or high friction. Okay? So I'm going to scroll down. We have our surfaces here. And I can write on it, if this is going to be what I'm going to want to do, like this. Okay. So we have ice skates. Who's been ice skating ever? Ice skating is fun. You skate on, the surface you skate on is ice. And does ice have high or low friction? What do you think, Bianca? Low. So I want you to write low. Right here. You have low friction on ice. It's slippery. Okay. How about hiking boots? What surface do you what kind of surface are hiking boots for? Rose? For white ground, dirt, or mud, right? So we'll say dirt or mud. And I'm going to put a slash. Dirt, mud. That's what you use your hiking boots for. And what kind of friction do hiking boots provide? Do they provide low friction or high friction? High or low friction? What do you think? Olivia? High. high friction. Because the sole has, like, it's made to grip, grip what they're walking on, right? Because would you want to wear hiking boots that make you slip all over? No. Okay. Now we have snow tires. Now some people get special tires for the snow. So what kind of surface would you be using if you had snow tires for your car? What kind of surface would those be good for? Hector? Low friction. I want to know what kind of surface are you driving on if you're uh, using? If it's ice, or if you're... Ice, ice or... Ice or snow. Ice or snow. And what kind of friction did you say? Low. Oh, so... I mean, High. High friction. Because the snow tires, although this surface is a low, low friction surface, right? But 
that the snow tires have high friction on them. That's what they, they um, the snow tires have high friction because they're made special to really grip the snow or the ice. That's their main purpose. They make them special so you can use them and feel safe driving. Okay, now I want you to think of another item and the surface that it's used on and whether it would be high or low. Can you think of another item? Logan? Skis. Skis, that's a good one. S-K-I-S. S -K -I -S. Do you ski? Yes. And so what kind of surface? Snow. Snow. And so do, do skis have low or high friction on the snow? Low. Low. And why do they have low friction? Because you're going downhill. You're going downhill. And do you want to spend a lot of time on the piece of snow that you're on, or do you want to be like gliding fast down the hill? Fast. Yeah, you want to get down the hill fast. So you don't want to be spending a lot of time on the hill or on that particular piece of snow. What would be another item that we can list? If there was two more items. Lucas? A oh, a skateboard, that's a good one. Skateboard. And what kind of surface is a skateboard on? Flat. What is it on? Flat. Well, no, the actual what it's made out of. Um, like sidewalk or road? Yeah, like a sidewalk or a road, I guess we could call that. Um, surface, we'll say sidewalk. And so is the friction from the skateboard high friction or low friction? Low. So you think you have low friction where you're, um, where the skateboard is coming off the, the sidewalk or do you think it's more staying on the sidewalk? Yeah, less high friction. You think it's more high friction? What do we think, boys and girls? I don't know. High, high. I think it might be more high friction, where it kind of has... Yeah, because you're pushing your body on Where you're trying to stay on it, right? Yeah. Where you're trying to stay. stay not so we'll say that it could be... I don't know, it's hard to say. Because you go fast on the skateboard, but there's also a lot of friction. There is a lot of friction with it. We'll say it's high friction, I guess. Friction. Okay. What's another item? Olivia? Rollerblades. Rollerblades. Okay. And where are we going to use our rollerblades? Probably on the street or the sidewalk. Okay. That would be, we'll say, the sidewalk. And so what kind of friction? High. We'll go with high friction. Okay. High friction. Okay. Very good. So we want our friction to be high where it's gripping it well. Okay. Does everybody have this? Because once I move it, oops, once I move, it's going to be gone. Choose the correct words to complete the following statements. And here's the words that you boys and girls have. You have less easily, motion, and more easily. So let's fill this in.
friction is a force that opposes what? What word do you think fits in here? Allison, what word do you think fits there? Motion. What is it? Motion. Did you say motion? Mm -hmm. Motion, yes, thank you. So we'll write motion here. So friction is a force that opposes motion between objects that are touching. Two slide blank when there is low friction than when there is high friction. What goes here? What do you think goes here? Somebody I haven't heard from. What word do you think goes there? Dave? More, more easily. More easily. Two slide more easily when there is low friction. More easily when there is low, low friction. So if there's lots of friction, what will happen to an object? If there's lots of friction, what happens to an object? Hector? Less easily. Well, How does it move? moves less easily, right? Less slow. It'll be slowed down. It's Very more nice. hard. It's harder for it to move, right? Very good. Because there's more friction. It's like, you know, when it snows a lot and you have to trudge through the snow, that's more friction. Yes? Also, I told um, Mateo, remember, when we were kids? That like, you had, like what? I told Mateo. Oh, yes? Oh, does Mateo still remember? He still what? He still likes you. Oh, well, I still like him. He's so nice. Very nice. So there you go. That is friction. Now, well, we have time. So let's see if we have time to keep moving. I don't think we have, you know what, we don't have quite enough time to, to keep moving. So there we go, boys and girls. Good job. So you could close your book. That's all we're going to do today.